growing straight and tall. But why does bamboo grow so quickly and when does it flower? A great deal about these familiar plants remains a mystery. What is not in doubt is bamboo's usefulness, its profound importance to Japan's industry, culture and everyday life through the ages. Recently, there has been renewed interest in bamboo as an industrial material for making things like car parts. This time on Japanology Plus, our topic is bamboo. We will explore its mysterious life cycle and see just how important it is to the people of Japan. Hello and welcome to Japanology Plus, I'm Peter Barakan. Today I'm in Kyoto at a place called the Rakusai Bamboo Park where they have about 110 different varieties of bamboo growing in a fairly compact area. There's also a little museum where they have on exhibit some unusual types of bamboo and also items made from bamboo. It's a good place to get clued up. In my younger days when I was living in London, I'd seen bamboo artifacts, of course, but it always seemed a rather exotic plant until I came to Japan and then you find it growing wild here just about everywhere. Let's start off today with a look at how bamboo is used in Japan. Bamboo grows in temperate and tropical areas. It is found throughout Japan, all the way to the northernmost main island of Hokkaido. It has been used in many ways since ancient times. This is a bamboo basket excavated from an archaeological site. It dates back 12,000 years. Even in those days, bamboo had a place in people's lives. Eventually, bamboo found countless uses, as tools, for example, and as a building material. Tough and adaptable, bamboo can even be used in seawater and has found various applications in the cultivation of seaweed. It's hard to imagine the Japanese way of life without bamboo. But bamboo is not only a functional material. In springtime, shoots of new bamboo are eaten as a delicacy. Thin sliced shoots cooked with steamed rice. This dish is the best way to enjoy the flavor of the young bamboo. In Japanese cuisine, with its devotion to seasonal flavors, bamboo shoots are an essential taste of spring. sheaths and leaves have antimicrobial properties that make them ideal for wrapping food. They are even a source of medicinal agent. A bamboo fence is a common feature of Japanese gardens. As bamboo weathers, it gradually blends in with the living landscape. The rustic beauty of bamboo, so different from worked woods, has greatly influenced Japanese aesthetic sensibilities. Here's one remarkable use for bamboo. Because it grows so tall and straight, it can be used as a very long duster. This is essential for the annual dusting of a giant Buddha statue like this. The unique qualities of bamboo are revealed in its various uses in all aspects of Japanese life. OK, let's meet our guest now on today's programme, Mr Shouzo Shibata, who is a professor of bamboo ecology at Kyoto University. Thank you very much for being with us on the programme today. Now, bamboo, as we've just seen, is used very widely in Japan. I mean, we actually eat it. Um, it's used in everyday life. It's even used in industry. Why do you think the Japanese have used bamboo for so many hundreds of years now, so widely. One reason is that it has a hollow stem. That makes it very lightweight. It doesn't take a strong man to carry lengths of bamboo. Even women and children can do it. That makes it very easy to use. In addition, bamboo can be split quite finely. 
That neat splitting quality makes it an ideal material for chopsticks and all kinds of other handcrafted items. And because it's hollow, you can make a bamboo cup like this just by cutting the stem. One more reason for its widespread use is that bamboo looks so fresh and clean, and in Japan, cleanliness has a sacred association. You see this clearly in Japanese customs, with bamboo being used in many religious rituals, for example. Bamboo is so useful, it contributes tremendously to the Japanese way of life. Despite the everyday importance of bamboo, its life cycle is not well understood. It is often called the world's fastest growing plant, and in fact it's capable of growing more than a meter in a single day. It does flower, but very, very rarely. Here's an extremely rare occurrence, Madake bamboo flowering after 120 years. And when bamboo flowers, it dies soon afterwards. Shozo Shibata of Kyoto University has been conducting research on bamboo for the past 35 years. Shibata's research covers not only the ecology of bamboo, but bamboo as a product, bamboo in culture, and the relationship between people and bamboo. He has revealed bamboo's versatile importance from ancient times up to the present day. And his research on the flowering of bamboo enabled him 11 years ago to be the first scientist to successfully predict when a bamboo flowering would occur. We're in the museum now, and uh, there's a panel here that tells us that bamboo is part of the grass family, which I found a little unusual, or unexpected, I should say. Nowadays, we classify plants based on their flower morphology, and although bamboo flowers so rarely, when it does, the flowers are like those of rice plants, a type of grass. Another way in which bamboo resembles grass is that it never increases in girth. Whatever the girth of the stem when it comes up out of the ground, that's how thick it will remain throughout its life. But bamboo has a hard, woody stem. That's certainly different from other grasses. So it's actually quite a strange kind of plant. You, you say that um, it remains the same thickness for its whole life. How long do, does uh, bamboo live, generally speaking? It varies from species to species, but it can be up to 120 years. And then finally, all the plants flower and all of them die. That's the life cycle of madake, for example. Wow. There are three main kinds of bamboo used in Japan. First, madake. Strong and very resilient, it is widely used as a building material. Here's a typical old-fashioned Japanese farmhouse. Madake is used for the roof framing. Next is Mosochiku. It has the widest girth of any Japanese bamboo species. Mosochiku bamboo is a seasonal delicacy eaten by the Japanese in springtime. It came to Japan from China in the 17th century and was a food from the start. And this is Hachiku. It is a smaller bamboo ranging from 3 to 10 centimeters in diameter. It is used in various crafts and for making the shakuhachi, a kind of flute. Bamboo was woven deeply into the fabric of Japanese life for a long time. But then something very unusual happened, resulting in a steep decline in its use. So one way or another, I mean, bamboo really is quite important to the everyday lives of most people who live in this country. Bamboo is incredibly useful. But then something happened about 40 years ago. The madake species of bamboo flowered throughout Japan, the whole country. Wow. Madake flowers only once in its lifetime and then dies. Lots of them, all at once. 
and then it will regrow from seeds and so on. But it takes a minimum of 10 years for that revival to occur. In the old days, Japanese people were able to wait. But by 1970, 40 or so years ago, most Japanese people were looking for quick solutions in a period of economic growth. They couldn't wait 10 years for madake to become available again. So they turned to other materials like plastic. That was a huge social change. So 10 years later, you get a new generation of bamboo growing up but people have already adapted to using plastic and other materials, so then what happens? People just kept on using plastic. And the reality is that madake groves were not natural. They were managed by humans to produce high-quality material. But after that, there was no one left to manage them. So although the madake bamboo regrew, the groves no longer produced much usable bamboo. And in the meantime, people had forgotten how to use bamboo at home and so on. That was a big turning point. The madake groves are now fully regrown, but very little usable madake is produced in Japan these days. I'm Matt Ault, and this is a taketombo, a Japanese bamboo copter. It's a traditional toy. They're easy to launch. You just spin them between your hands like this. I'm here with Mr. Katsuhiko Haneda, the president of the local Bamboo Lovers Association and his neighbors. And they're going to teach me all about traditional Japanese bamboo toys, just like this one. Oh, Wow, look at all these cool toys. These are all made out of bamboo? That's right, all bamboo toys. Well, what are they? I, I've never seen anything like this before. This is a bamboo top. See how well it spins? It looks pretty too. That's a top. It spins just like a top. This is an interesting one. Here, Matt, give the yellow bead a tug. Okay, I'll, I'll try pulling, uh, pull, pull this just like this. A different color move. Okay, well, I'll try the red now. Oh, that made the yellow one move. Fun, isn't it? It's called a karakuribo, or trick stick, if you like. It's an old Japanese toy. And finally, we have this, bamboo stilts. You put your feet here and walk like this. Why do Japanese kids love bamboo so much? Well, in the old days, there were bamboo groves all over the place around here. Kids could easily chop down some bamboo and make these toys themselves. I see. Okay, we've got these stilts, so how, how do I get on them? Lean forward and climb up one foot at a time. Okay, ready? One. One. Two. Oh, no! <laughs> Oh, no! <laughs> it's just two pieces of bamboo and some wood blocks, but it's really tough to balance on. You have to lean forward while you're walking, and that's the most difficult part. But I'm not giving up. I am not giving up. So, assuming I got better at these, what, what kind of things, how can I play with them? We used to race with them. If you get good at using them, you can play stilt tag. Or you can hop on one foot, all kinds of things. You can balance on one stilt and throw the other stilt over your shoulder just to show off. As kids, we would brag about the stilt stunts we could do. I'm going to give this a little more try. I'm going to keep practicing. When you get better at it, we'll race. <laughs> Oh, 